So good morning, everyone. With us here today is Minnesota Senator Paul Utke, Chair of the NCOIL Joint State Federal Relations and International Insurance Issues Committee and Chair of the Minnesota Senate Health and Human Services Finance and Policy Committee. Good morning, Senator Utke, and thank you so much for joining us for this month's NCOIL one-on-one -on -one interview. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so let's hop right in. I want to know how you first got involved in public service. Well, <laughs> I've... Uh... Traditionally lived in uh, small towns most of my life, and I currently do, where I'm at in northwestern Minnesota. Um, and you know, in a small town, if you show up at a meeting, you come home with a job. And uh, there was a lot of that that participated in a lot of our local organizations, uh, because I was a Main Street merchant at the time. And that just one step led to another. I ended up spending uh, seven years on the city council, and here I am at the Minnesota Senate. <laughs> Great. So, yeah, uh, I wonder how you're, you know, I've had a wide ranging career, both in the trucking industry, owning a hardware store and as an insurance agent. I wonder how that kind of led you into uh, your career in public service. Well, I think, you know, the, a background like that, uh, you know, you mentioned uh, some of the things have already been in, um, you know, I, I tell people I bring a buffet of uh, life experiences to the uh, Senate. Um, you know, I've also, I started out, I grew up on a farm. I uh, worked on farms until I was uh, finished with college. And uh, in my uh, oh, probably last 10, 12 years, I've also been involved in uh, as a uh, legal videographer. And so you add that to everything else that uh, I've done along with the uh, volunteer work, uh, the various organizations that I served on their boards and such with, um, it's, it's made it really nice because there's not that many things that come through here that I haven't at least had something to do with. So I guess, given that experience, uh, what issues have you been most involved in in your time in the legislature? Well, because of the wide variety, I have a, a, lot, a wide variety of interests also. So I have carried a, a, a quite a variety of bills. You know, you your bills typically follow the committees that you're working with and on, um, but I've also taken some that uh, have gotten outside those areas just because of interest. But, um, you know, most of my bills or a good share of them end up relating around human services and insurance and such. Uh, I've been on the Commerce Committee um, all of my years here so far, and this is my sixth year. Um, and uh, of course, uh, uh, with the human services and now um, even more into the healthcare, uh, it's been kind of a natural. So you said you're getting into healthcare. Um, you know, different states kind of handle health insurance related issues differently in that sometimes it's part of the general insurance committee or other times they have their own separate committee or subcommittee. How's that handled in Minnesota? Well, the health insurance itself falls under commerce because that's where our uh, commissioner or the health is regulated, the actual insurance itself. Um, as an example, if we have something like our reinsurance uh, uh, plan or bill that we're currently working on, it starts in commerce because it's insurance related, but it's all, it involves healthcare. So uh, a lot of those things do cross the lines and uh, start in commerce and uh, definitely come through health uh, just because they affect both. Interesting. So it sounds like a busy schedule. I wonder if public service had any impact on your family life at all. <laughs> you, you should ask my wife, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, it's this is a crazy, uh, uh, I guess, if you, I don't know if you refer to it as a game, but a, a crazy occupation, um, you know, from the, the various uh, pressures, you could say, uh, to the crazy schedules. But, you know, I don't let any of that bother me. Uh, the, sometimes uh, the, the more tense the situation gets, the more I thrive on it. Um, so that part goes well. Um, I'm fortunate and we are fortunate. Uh, our uh, two daughters are growing and on their own. So it's just my wife and I that have to contend with this schedule. She works yet back uh, at home and that's three and a half hours away. So, um, you know, I go back and forth uh, uh, on Sundays and Thursdays, so I get to spend the weekends up there. And and because of what we get involved in in the legislature, I travel for a number of meetings now. And uh, 
My wife enjoys that also. So it's a chance for us to experience new things that we probably wouldn't have if it wasn't for the legislature. So as crazy as it can be on one side, it's a benefit and fun on the other. And uh, I guess it's just the world we're, li we're living in. That's great. So you mentioned that you travel for some meetings. So I guess shifting gears, uh, how did you first hear about MCOIL and how many years have you been involved? Well, I think I first attended an NQL meeting in the summer of uh, 2018 um, out in Salt Lake City. Um, like a lot of things that come across our desk here, it, I got an invite to uh, go to the NQL conference and I looked at it and that, you know, with my background and also being involved on the Commerce Committee here in the Senate, it just everything sounded good and things kind of lined up and I thought I want to try this and I went I enjoyed it and I've been going back ever since. Well we're glad to have you part of the organization. Uh, how would you describe your overall experience then Coyle? You know it's 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 been good I guess that's what brings you back. Um, you know, the friendships that I've made with staff, uh, with other fellow legislators around the country, um, and with the industry people. You know, some of our industry people from the local area do travel uh, and attend. So you've got those that you already know, but I have met a lot of others uh, along the way. Um, it's uh, if, if it's something you're interested in, you know, it just makes it that much easier. And in this case, uh, it's a topic uh, related to insurance that I've enjoyed. And uh, uh, I just, I look forward to them. It's, uh, I come home with much more than I can give while I'm there. You know, I participate in stuff, which is great. But uh, when you uh, come home, you've, you've learned a lot and uh, it just makes the next steps that much easier. That's great. So you mentioned uh, meeting people in the industry. What do you view as some of the benefits for industry and consumer representatives uh, for NQOIL meetings? for the industry people yeah okay um you know i i think it's it's a two-way street um they get to they work with the elected officials the legislators and we work with them on the common uh topic and it's a great time to uh, come together rub shoulders on an issue and uh you know in the end uh come up with something that's workable um uh, you know, in this case, across the whole United States, if it becomes a model act and, um, you know, whether it's NCOIL or uh, going to a board meeting, if we come together and share ideas, usually we come up with something better and stronger and something we can go home and be proud of. And I think that's what happens here. Great. So obviously, you know, the impacts of COVID-19 has probably had effects on all parts of your life as a, both a legislator and uh, in the industry. So I'm interested as to how you've had any different expectations as to how the two years have played out compared to how it's usually been in the legislature. COVID's been an interesting uh, um, process the last two and a half years because it seems to also have uh, things unrelated to healthcare involved, which happens to be a little bit of the political side. Um, in some phases, we have... Uh, everything's gone really pretty good. And in other cases, we're doing everything through Zoom. And, uh, um, you know, we all know the challenges. We all learn something new with uh, being able to communicate and correspond uh, via th or through our computers. But, uh, um, you know, it's, we've, we've found new ways to do things, which is good. Uh, but bringing back a lot of the uh, past the traditional ways I think are better. Uh, so we'll just have to have a, a, a good mix going forward. And I think it'll be a successful mix. Um, with NCOIL, I know we um, were able to attend virtually there for a while if uh, need be. And we had members that did. Um, and there was, I think I only did one of those meetings that way, but uh, the rest of them were in person also. In fact, I think they were all in person. I just happened to want have one I couldn't get to. But uh, so that mix has been great. But uh, getting back in person, I think, is what we all have to do to get the, get, get our job done. Definitely is great seeing everybody back in person at our meeting in Las Vegas and in Jersey City as well. So that's great. Um, so moving on, I'm wondering if you have a favorite either model law or issue we've discussed over the past few years at NCOIL. Well, there's been a number of them that I've 
kind of take an interest in. And, you know, uh, even though it's been since 2018, I've been going, to, uh, it still seems like it was just yesterday, but there's a current model act law that uh, we're actually working on here in Minnesota. And the last two NQL conferences, we've kind of moved it, we've passed it, but moved it forward to the next meeting. And that's the Structured Settlement Protection Act. Um, and that happens to be one we're heavily involved in right now in Minnesota. In fact, I have that bill up again this afternoon. So um, it's, uh, it's, it's in its current uh, stages of moving forward. We expect to have closure here shortly. And uh, that's a bill that has had similar language passed in Georgia, Louisiana, and Nevada already. And uh, we hope to join those ranks here in Minnesota. And after we do that, we'll bring those additions back to our uh, July meeting in Jersey City and hopefully incorporate that into the Model Act. So it's, it's one that, you know, currently I've had a chance to actually be boots on the ground and work with, and it's, it's been a good experience. So it sounds like you're busy getting a lot of bills through the legislature. I'm wondering, we see Congress is pretty divided along party lines and polarized now. Are you seeing that in Minnesota as well? You know, maybe there's a little bit, um, but if you watch the news, you get a, a whole a totally different picture. I would say overall, it's pretty good. There's very few bills that go across the floor. And when you go across the floor, that's its final stages of passage that don't have bipartisan support. Um, it, you know, I could say that the number of bills that probably passed on party lines um, in the last number of years, you could count on one hand. Uh, there's always some crossover and some uh, bipartisan support. So as much as I, there is division amongst the parties and the, 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 idea, the thinkings of uh, the various groups, um, I think we do come together fairly well, as good as can be expected in current times. Interesting. So naturally, we've discussed, you know, why you like NCOIL and think it's a great organization, but there's always room for improvement. Does he have any uh, recommendations about what we can do going forward? Well, um, you know, I, I, I see a, NCOIL doing a lot of good things now. And like everything, we know times are changing. What will the future bring? We don't always know. Um, I would say we want to keep up what we're doing. Um, I, I the conferences are well put together. It's just a, a well-run organization, um, but it's like everything. We keep our eyes wide open, see what's around the next corner. But for now, um, uh, keep doing what you're doing because it's it's working well. Great to hear. Thank you. All right. So now we're going to move into our lightning round. These are the real hard-hitting questions. Uh, <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> so what is your favorite all-time movie? Well, you're talking to a guy that uh, up until a handful of years ago never watched movies hardly at all. So uh, my my wife and daughters now laugh at me because I always said movies I didn't have time for them that you know <laughs> that sort of thing. But it it, it kind of makes me chuckle. I could go back to one. Um, you take the Grumpy Old Man series that was actually filmed here in Minnesota. I did watch uh, those two, and then um, I'm a motorcycle enthusiast, so. Uh, the movie Wild Hogs, which took place, what, 12, 14 years ago, uh, was always kind of, it was one of those I did see back in that time and did enjoy it. And um, so it, it kind of hits home. Interesting. All right. Favorite all-time book? Ooh. Um, you know, I... <laughs> That that's a that's a good one on a book because I don't normally read a lot of books. I, I read a lot of magazines. I read a lot of other things. I read, you know, reading stuff all the time, but I'm not one that sits down and just opens up a book like some people will say they can get lost in that book for hours and just enjoy it. Um, that has never been me. I uh, usually mine is subject related around here. It's, uh, uh, you know, you're reading bills, you're reading articles, you're reading all that. Um, but uh, I'd have to uh, I'd have to pass on a book. All right, you can say favorite musical artist. Well, um, you know I'm a country music fan. Um, if I think back to some, I've gone to various concerts, outdoor concerts, etc. But indoor stuff, and just because of his mass popularity, 
Um, I'll say Garth Brooks. Um, he's had a tremendous career, uh, a great entertainer, and uh, someone that uh, if he came to town, I'd go back again and uh, watch him perform. Great choice for sure. All right, last one. Three dinner party guests, living or dead. <laughs> okay. Um, if it's going to be, you know, I've had uh, kids ask me, what, who's your favorite president and why and some of that. So we'll kind of go along those lines. And uh, um, one of them, because of their interesting histories or what they've done um, through history. Uh, and a couple of them I would think of our past, uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Um, not only his accomplishments, but he's also in North Dakota. He, he was fond of, very fond of North Dakota, particularly the Western part of the state. And I'm a North Dakota native. So I've kind of always uh, researched a lot of what he's done. Ronald Reagan, of course, uh, and his popularity and what he did. And um, I'll throw in another guy, totally different, uh, just because I think he's uh, he's an old country boy. It's Blake Shelton. I enjoy watching uh, what he does and uh, being from the, the, the rural country area like that. Uh, he's just I think he'd be fun to uh, get to know better. Great answers all around. So this wraps up this month's Envoy 101 interview. Senator Uckey, thank you so much for joining us.